Hi there, Grade 8, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Maths. I hope you're all well, and I hope you're all keeping warm in this chilly weather. For those of you that are um, watching this for the first time, very warm welcome to Grade 8 Maths, um, and I hope you enjoy the lesson so much that you will come back next time. Right, let's see what's in store for us today. Okay, so we're going to be doing measurement, and it is actually our fourth lesson in the series. But if you've only joined us now, not a problem at all, because this can be a standalone lesson. And today, we are going to look at area. So let's just recap what you know about area from grade 7. The area of any closed two-dimensional shape is the amount of surface that it covers. Okay, so it's the surface that is covered by a closed shape. And I'll explain that a little bit more just now. And then we think of the area of a shape as the number of squares it covers. So if you think about a shape and you put a square piece of paper or you divide it up into small squares, you count up those squares and you will get the area of the shape. And that's why area is always written in units squared. Okay, and area is expressed in unit, square units such as millimeter squared, centimeter squared, meter squared and kilometers squared. Right, so that is what I was explaining in point number two. When we think of an area, we think of it as a number of little squares, um, and we count up the little squares, and we get the squared area, and that's why we say area is millimeter squared, centimeter squared, meter squared, and kilometer squared. Um, I urge you to actually try it. Draw a shape and get a square piece of paper, as in with a whole lot of squares on it, Put it onto that um, shape that you've drawn and count up the squares and um, work out the actual area using the formula and see if it works out the same. Right, let's go on. Let's look at the formulae to calculate area in various shapes and these are regular polygons. So if we look at a square, remember a square is a regular polygon. We have a formula to work out its area and what we would say is that a square is equal, the area is equal to side times side. So therefore, it's equal to the side squared. Okay, the side times the other side will give me the square of one side. Right, um, a rectangle, it's also a regular polygon. So we can apply a formula where it is L times B, which is the length times the breadth. So it will end up with LB, which is also a square unit. Okay. Then we're looking at a triangle here, and this triangle is a scalene triangle. So what we need to do is we need to find the perpendicular height, which is here. And we know it's perpendicular height because that little um, block there shows that it's a right angle. Perpendicular height times half the base. So we can actually say half base times perpendicular height. Okay, um, And that, that will then give us half BH, which is half base perpendicular height. Right, so that would give us the area of any triangle. Even if it is a right angle triangle all on its own, then the one side that meets the other side at a right angle can be its perpendicular height. Right, let's have a look here. So let's put these things into practice. Okay, here we have um, a rectangle. We are given, we need to calculate the area of the rectangle when we are given the sides 8 centimeters and 5 centimeters. So L times B would be 8 centimeters times 5 centimeters. That would give me 40 centimeters squared. Remember, because centimeters times centimeters gives you centimeters squared. Okay, right. Then another example. Here we have a triangle. And here you can see it is a right angle triangle because the little right angle is there. But you could have seen that anyway. But also just remember, just a hint, if you are not told or given the... Um, shown on the diagram that it is a right angle don't presume that it is because it may just not be it may just look very close to that right but this time we are because the little block is in its place and we've got a perpendicular height of six millimeters and um, a base of eight millimeters so don't forget we need to calculate the area of the triangle don't forget that the um, formula is half base times perpendicular height Okay, so we're going to go half times our eight, centim our eight millimeters, sorry, that's our eight millimeters, and that is our base, so it's half the base times the perpendicular height, and actually because of mul the way multiplication works, we can just all lump it together. Okay, so it's half times eight times six, 
and we're going to get half times 48 because we can say 8 times 6 first and that will give us our millimeters squared already. Half of that is 24 millimeters squared. Okay, just in case you didn't know, when you're working with a triangle, you can always double it and make it into a um, rectangle or a square. And then you will see how this formula actually works. Because actually what you're saying is length times breadth multiplied together and we are using half of that. But I digress. Let's carry on. Let's look at another example. There we have a shape and we are given the measurements, but this time it is an irregular polygon. So we, can, we need to work out the area of the whole shape. We can do this in two ways. Okay, the first way is by going 12 times, uh, sorry, 13 times 42, because that's that one there. Then we can go plus 13 times 42 minus 12. So then it's that square there. Can you see? Because that's 42 minus the 12. So you're finding that length. And you're going to say that times 13. And then 13 times 42 minus 24. Because you're going to minus that from um, 42 and that from 42. So 2 times 12 is 24 to get that length. All right. So there you, what we've done here is we've divided the shape into three different shapes going across like that. This one here, which is 42 times 13. Then this one here, which is the 42 minus 12 times 13. And then this one here, which is 42 minus 12 minus 12 times 13. So that's minus 24. Okay, so let's work that out. We've got 13 centimeters times 42 centimeters. That gives us 546 centimeters squared. Then we've got 13 times 42 minus 12, which gives me 30 centimeters. And we've got 13 times 42 minus 24, which is 18 centimeters. So 13 times 30, and then 13 times 18. So we're going to end up with 546 plus 390 plus 234, all centimeters squared, right? Add that all together, we get 1,170 centimeters squared. Now you're probably thinking, what other way can we work it out? Well, let me show you. Okay. What we can do is we can make this whole thing one big square, right? And then we're going to subtract the little squares off it, okay? So we're going to say 42 centimeters times by 13 plus 13 plus 13, because that plus that plus that gives us that whole side. So then we're working out the big square, and then we will take away 13 times 24, and 13 times 12, because this is the 13 times 12 one, and then this block here, if you can imagine it, is 13 times 24. So what we've done is we've worked out the whole block, and then we've taken away what's missing from that whole block, which is this one, and then that one. Okay, so let's work it out. We've got 42 times 39, because that's 13 plus 13 plus 13, to give us the whole block. Um, and then we've got 13 times 24, which is 312, and 13 times 12, which is 156, okay? 42 times 39, we're going to get 1,638 centimeters squared, and 312 plus 156 gives us 468 centimeters squared. So 1,638 minus 468, see, we get the same answer as 1,170 centimeters squared. Now, the reason I showed you both ways is because some of you may find this first way easier and others may find this way easier. If you think about the whole block, work out the whole block and take away what's not there. If you just want to do this, then you need to divide that up into um, components that you can understand how to work out. Okay, you try this one. Here we've got an irregular polygon again, and I want you to calculate the area of this. And there we have our measurements. Okay, so pause the video, and when you come back, um, we will go over it and see how you did. Okay, let's see. How did you do? Right, we had to calculate the area here. Again, we can tackle this in two ways. So the first way would be to work out the whole block, or we could work out, or one way, sorry, is to work out the whole block and then take away these two um, missing parts, or we can work out that part and that part and that part separately. So let's do that first. 8 times 2, and that side's also 8 times 2, 
and then we will go four times whatever this is because it's eight minus the three minus the three okay that gives us that because we know that the whole side would be eight minus three minus three so you can see i've worked it out there so eight times two which will give us that area then another eight times two which will give us that area and then it will be four times the eight minus the three minus the three okay so eight times two will give me 16 centimeters squared Plus the other side, which is also 8 times 2, which will give me 16 centimeters squared. Plus this ends up being 4 times 2, because 8 minus 3 minus 3 gives me 2. And 4 times 2 will give me 8 centimeters squared. So 16 plus 16 gives me 32. I'm going to add on the 8, and I'm going to end up with 40 centimeters squared. Okay, what is the other way? Remember, it's working out the whole block and then taking away that area and that area. So if we work out the whole block, it's eight centimeters plus this two centimeters plus the four centimeters plus the two centimeters, as I've written there. And then we're going to take away the missing block. So it's three times four and three times four. Okay, so here we're going to go two plus four is six, six plus two is eight, so it's eight times eight. And in this side, we're going to go 3 times 4 is 12 centimeters, 3 times 4 is 12 centimeters. So what we're actually saying is that this missing piece is 12 centimeters squared, and that missing piece is 12 centimeters squared. So if we work out our 64 centimeters squared minus the 24 centimeters squared of those missing blocks, we end up again with 40 centimeters squared. Remember, guys, if you don't understand anything, to please email grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com and somebody will get back to you with an answer, or you can go back earlier on in the video and re-watch. Okay, the reason again that I've shown you these two different methods is because some of you will see the whole block and be able to take out what's missing, or some of you will rather want to work out each part. And some people find one way easier and other people find the other way easier. Whatever you find easier, you do, as long as you understand what you're doing. Right, how about this one? Okay, calculate the area of the irregular polygon. There we have the irregular polygon. It's a bit of an odd looking shape, isn't it? Um, here we've given all the measurements and let's see if we can work it out. Okay, this side is five centimeters, that side, 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 all five centimeters. But what we can see here as well is that these are two triangles. Can you see that? And they would be, um, a right angle triangle because the fact that this side is a straight side so we are going to work out the area because we are given the height here as being 13 the whole length of the side is 13 so we can say 5 times 13 to work out that side there and then we're going to work out each triangle so it's half 4 because that's the base times the perpendicular height. Now you're probably wondering where I got the perpendicular height from. But there's 5, so the one side is 5. That side is equal because of the markings, so this side is also 5. Okay, which means it's 10. 13 minus 10 will give me 3. And I've got two of them like that, so it's half times 4 times 3, another half times 4 times 3. Okay, so we work out 5 times 13 gives me 65 centimeters squared. Half times 4 is 2, times 3 is 6, and I've got two of those, so it's 6 centimeters squared plus 6 centimeters squared. 65 plus 6 plus 6 is going to give me 77 centimeters squared, okay? There's really only one way to work this out, and what you need to just do is look very, very carefully at the irregular polygon to see how you can divide it up and also draw on your previous knowledge. All right, so your knowledge of how to work out the area of a triangle. Okay, now let's try and solve these problems. A room is as long as it is wide, so in other words it's a square. Calculate its length if it has an area of 6 meters squared. Then a triangle has a perpendicular height of 5 centimeters and a base of 8 centimeters, 8 centimeters sorry. calculate the area. A rectangle has an area of 24 millimeters squared. If one of the sides is 4 millimeters, what is the length of the other side? Okay, I've given you a hint for the first one. I want you to pause the video and then we will go over it together when you come back. 
Right, let's see how you did. Okay, the first one, a room is as long as it is wide. As I said, it's a square. So calculate its length if it has an area of 16 millimeters squared. What is the formula for working out the area of a square? Its area is equal to side times side, which means that area is equal to side squared. So if we know what the area is, it's 16 meters squared, and that is the side squared. So what are we going to do? We're going to square root it. Okay, so we're going to find the square root of 16 meters squared, and that will give me the length of one of the sides. So 16 um, square rooted will give me 4 meters, because remember you don't only uh, square root the 16, you also square root the meters squared. You're going to end up with 4 meters, and that gives you the length of one of its sides, and that is what... Um, that's what it asks. Calculate its length if its area is that. Okay, everybody understand? Remember once again, if you don't understand something or you want to ask a question, to email your question to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. Okay, let's look at the next one. A triangle has a perpendicular height of 5 centimeters and a base of 8 centimeters. Now you have to calculate the area. Remember, the area is half base times perpendicular height. So your perpendicular height has been given to you as well as your base. So you will go half times 8 times 5 because the base is 8. It doesn't really matter which way around you write them because just remember the laws of multiplication. Okay, it's interchangeable. Right, so half 8 times 5. You can either say half 8 is 4 times 5, which will give you 20, or half of 40, which still gives you 20 centimeters squared. Please remember, guys, as well, that little square sign is so important. The exponent is so important because that gives us the unit of an area. Remember, one of the things that we discussed right at the beginning of the lesson is that the area is always noted by units squared. Okay, so then let's go on to the next one. Oopsie, all of these say number one, but you know that it's not. Okay, the third one, a rectangle has an area of 24 millimeters squared. If one of the sides is four millimeters, what is the length of the other side? Okay, so it's we given the area in this case. One of the sides is four millimeters. What is the length of the other side? So what is the formula? Perimeter is equal to L times B. Okay, there we have it. Um, L times B, the length, uh, one of the sides is 4, let's just, let's just use that as the length. So um, we're going to say 24 millimeters squared, because that's our area, is equal to 4 millimeters times X, because we don't know the length of the other side. Right, so now what you're going to do to find X on its own, algebra comes into play here. We've got to divide the 24 by 4 millimeters. Okay, and because we are dividing millimeters squared by millimeters, we end up with an answer of millimeters. And that's what we want because we're trying to find the length of the side. So 24 divided by 4 is going to give me 6. And because it's millimeters squared divided by millimeters, it is going to give me just an answer of millimeters. So that will give me 6 millimeters and that is the length of the other side. Okay, guys, I hope you've understood everything. Remember, if there's anything that you want to ask, don't forget to email your query through to grade 8 at worksheetcloud.com. Otherwise, go back to the beginning of the video and watch it all over again. Thank you so much for... Let me just move myself down a little bit. Thank you so much for watching today's lesson. I hope you will come back and watch some more grade 8 maths lessons. Um, and please don't forget to do the activity that is attached to this um, lesson, just for extra practice. Okay, um, I hope to see you again, and I, for now, I would like, just like to wish you well, and um, keep warm. Bye-bye for now, guys.